Welcome. NSG 515, study section 4. Cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Introduction. In the last section, we discussed the roles of nurses in the intensive care units. In this study section, we shall be discussing the cardiopulmonary resuscitation, which is commonly referred to as cardiac arrest. You will begin the section by explaining what the CPR means. You will also attempt at pointing out the different indications of CPR, under which you will discuss chain of survival, chest compression, and rescue breath. Moving on, you will consider the introduction to epidemiology of the CPR, in which you will examine the sudden cardiac arrest, epidemiology of CPR, and nurses' role in epidemiology of CPR. Learning outcomes. When you have studied this section, you should be able to explain cardiopulmonary resuscitation, describe the epidemiology of CPR. What is cardiopulmonary resuscitation? Cardiopulmonary resuscitation, CPR, is a series of life-saving actions that improve the chance of survival following cardiac arrest. Sanson, Rogers, and Kelema, 2010. Although the optimal approach to CPR may vary depending on the rescuer, the victim, and the available resources. The fundamental challenge remains how to achieve early and effective CPR. Time is a very important factor. Each minute that passes before the onset of the CPR measures lower the chance of survival by 10%. Handley et al. 2005. Brain damage begins in 4 to 6 minutes of cardiac arrest. CPR consists of regular compressions of the chest and rescue breathing, usually 30 compressions to 2 breaths. Indications for CPR CPR should be performed immediately on any person who has become unconscious and is found to be pulseless. Assessment of cardiac electric activity via rapid reading strip recording can provide a more detailed analysis of the type of cardiac arrest as well as indicate additional treatment options. Loss of effective cardiac activity is generally due to the spontaneous initiation of a non-perfusing arrhythmia, sometimes referred to as malignant arrhythmia. Chain of survival. Successful resuscitation following cardiac arrest requires an integrated set of coordinated actions represented by the links in the chain of survival. Chest compression. To carry out a chest compression, you should take the following steps. Place the heel of one hand in the center of the chest between nipples. Place other hand on top. Interlock fingers. Compress the chest. Touch chest compressions. Compression depth 2 inches. Rates 100 per minute. Rescue breath. To rescue the breath of someone with cardiac arrest, you should take the following steps. Pinch the nose. Take a normal breath. Place lips over mouth. Blow until the chest rises. Take about one second. Allow chest to fall. Repeat. Introduction to Epidemiology of CPR Despite important advances in prevention, cardiac arrest remains a substantial public health problem and a leading cause of death in many parts of the world. Cardiac arrest occurs both in and out of the hospital. In Nigeria, approximately 1,350,000 people per year approximately half of them in hospitals suffer a cardiac arrest and receive attempted resuscitation. This estimate does not include the substantial number of victims who suffer an arrest without attempted resuscitation. Why attempted resuscitation is not always appropriate. There are many lives and live years lost because appropriate resuscitation is not attempted. The estimated incidence of EMS treated out of hospital cardiac arrest in Nigeria is about 20 to 55 per 100,000 persons per year, and approximately 25% of this presents with pulseless ventricular arrhythmias. 
the estimated incidence of in-hospital cardiac arrest is three to six over 1,000 admissions and similarly approximately 25 percent of these present with pulseless ventricle arrhythmias. Cardiac arrest victims who present with ventricular fibrillation VF or pulseless ventricular tracheardia VT have a substantially better outcome compared with those who present with asto or pulseless electric activity. Saxon et al. 2010. Sudden cardiac arrest. Sudden cardiac arrest. Sudden cardiac arrest, SCA, is a leading cause of death all over the world, claiming an estimated 325,000 lives per country each year. SCA kills 1,000 people a day or person every two minutes. SCA most often occurs in patients with heart disease, especially those who have congestive heart failure and have had a heart attack. AHRQ Research Activities 2002 It is estimated that 95% of victims of cardiac arrest die before they reach a hospital or other source of emergency help. SCAs accounted for 10,460 75.4% so of all 13,873 cardiac disease deaths in persons aged 35 to 44 years. And the proportion of cardiac arrests that occur out of hospital increase with aged from 5.8% in persons aged 0 to 4 years to 61.0% in persons aged lesser than 85 years. MMWR 2002. Epidemiology of CPR. Cardiopulmonary resuscitation CPR evolved from a specific intervention applied in limited clinical situations to the devote response to cardiac arrest in or out of the hospital. An evolution accompanied by a dramatic decline in survival rates after CPR. Subsequently, innovations allowing rapid out-of-hospital CPR resulted in improved outcomes in the out-of-hospital setting. After one year, most survivors had normal or mind disability. The study concluded that mortality of out-of-hospital cardiorespiratory arrest in children is high and when resuscitation is started soon by layperson or paramedics, survival is increased. Hence, duration of resuscitation effort was the best indicator of mortality. Mortality was higher in the patients who presented slow rhythms, acetosevia, bradycardia, or pulseless electric activity than in those presenting ventricular fibrillation. Multivariate logistic regression revealed that the best indicator of mortality was duration of cardiopulmonary resuscitation longer than 20 minutes. In a study to analyze the characteristics and outcome of out-of-hospital cardiorespiratory arrest in children in Spain, involving 95 children between 7 days and 16 years with cardiorespiratory arrests. The outcome variables were the sustained return of spontaneous circulation, initial survivor, and survivor at one year. Final survivor. From the study, Initial survival was 47.3% and one-year survival was 26.4%. Mortality was higher in children younger than one year. Survival of patients with respiratory arrest, 82.1%, was significantly higher than survival of cardiac arrest victims, 14.4%. Nurses' role in epidemiology of CPR. Nurses from your parts significant parts of healthcare therefore need to be abreast of the current trends and technological improvements in healthcare. As such, nurses need to be involved in surveillance studies to help them to know the population at risk to direct care. Nurses should advocate for continuous in-service training to help them be in line with new trends in the resuscitation process and gain additional experience. The ability to perform quality and effective cardiopulmonary resuscitation lies in the understanding of the procedure and the physiological implication of whatever activity is carried out. 
This is where the skilled training of the nurse comes into place. Usually, being the first person to come in contact with the patients. When a nurse is to engage in the epidemiology of CPR, he or she should follow the step listed in the article below. Study section summary. In this study section, you learned that cardiac arrest continues to be all to be an all too common cause of premature death, and small incremental improvement in survival can translate into thousands of lives saved every year. The prompt initiation of effective chest compression is a fundamental aspect of cardiac arrest resuscitation. CPR improves the victim's chance of survival by providing heart and brain circulation. Nurses play a vital role in the assessment and provision of CPR to increase the chance of survival of clients in cardiac arrest. Cardiopulmonary resuscitation CPR, evolved from a specific intervention applied in limited clinical situations to the devote response to cardiac arrest in or out of the hospital. An evolution accompanied by a dramatic decline in survival rates after CPR. Sudden cardiac arrest, SCA, is a leading cause of death all over the world, claiming an estimated 325,000 lives per country each year. SCA kills 1,000 people a day or one person every two minutes. SCA most often occurs in patients with heart disease.